everyone is talking about this artificial intelligence tool called chat gpt as someone who uses matlab for scientific analysis do you know that this tool can actually change the way you use matlab for example it can help you read files create graphical user interfaces build up do basic statistical analysis and even write quite complicated codes that can help you with your analysis if you're interested in knowing how this can be done then sit back and relax as i walk you through how chat gpt can be included within matlab So what is chat GPT? And it is a chat box and the GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. It's launched by this company called OpenAI in November 30th of 2022. Currently, it's a free version, you know, as of the time of filming of this video. So if you want to get hold of the software, what you need to do is to visit this website, chat.openai. Dot com and so let's just look at how you're going to do it so if we go to the browser so i'll basically just chat.openai.com and when you get into the software so basically this is what it looks like there is um, a light mode so normally by default it comes up with a light mode but i prefer to have it in a dark mode and, and that's what you will see so it's quite a minimalist um, web page and here i've logged into my account if you don't have an account then you need to log in as well so there are some examples that it already gives you to get you get started what these capabilities are and of course it has its own real limitations i won't be dwelling on the limitations in this video and then most of the conversations happen in this you know little input text you know input environment and that's kind of where you type in most of your input and that's what we're going to be dealing with so in this video as we explore a matlab and its use in ChatGPT. There are three categories that we're going to look at. The first category is just general learning about how MATLAB works and what are the commands that drive things and how things are done. So let's say you're not aware of them. Instead of searching through the documentation file, you can actually ask ChatGPT and it will tell you what the answers are. So the second category is about creating graphical user interfaces. So I'll show you how you can use ChatGPT to, GPT to create graphical user interfaces. And then finally, we'll look at certain examples of how to write excellent MATLAB codes with ChatGPT and kind of play with it within MATLAB to see what will happen. So the first thing that we're going to ask ChatGPT is a question that looks like this. So if I just paste the question here, what MATLAB command should I use to generate a random number? So this is something that maybe you're interested in. So if you do that, then what ChatGPT will do is it will give you some information and it's already giving us some information about this, saying that you know the command that you need to use is this R-A-N-D command, which is called a RAND command. And then it demonstrates to us how it can actually be used to generate it let's say you're generating between number one and ten so it says this is how it will work you can also use the rand plus and n to generate a number for a standard normal distribution and then you could also use other versions of that i mean what makes this really interesting is that it's answering these questions for you you know so that you can then pick out what you want to do from that so that's number one if this is the kind of content that you like please do subscribe to this channel so when contents like this are made you'll be the first to see it and i'd like you to tell me in the comment in the comment section what is your opinion of chat gpt do you think it's really a good software or a bad software do you think it's gonna help you with learning about matlab or other software what is really your impression because there's a lot of discussion going on there about uh chat gpt so i would like to know in the comment section what you think thank you so the second thing that I would like to chat GPT to do for me now is now that I know that RAND function can be used, but I'm really interested in how I can use it for my simulations, for my analysis. Let's say I ask it a question that looks like this. How can I generate a random 2D coordinates or random 2D coordinates in MATLAB so that they are distributed within a domain of 100 by 100? So you've got a 2D domain 100 by 100. I want to randomly distribute particles within that. So I'll put that command and then I'll see what ChatGPT will give to me. Now, again, it's saying that you can actually use this RAND function to generate these 2D coordinates that are disputed within this domain. And this is an example of what you can do. So it already tells me how I can go about doing that. So I specify my X coordinates and Y coordinates as a random function. And then, you know, you, you get the coordinate positions. And then it goes on to explain for that you can also use the RAND I function to generate specific values, specific values, and then they run end. So it goes into more details to explain 
a specific problem. So this mode of using ChatGPT is really for learning and for learning about what goes on in MATLAB and how it interprets it without having to necessarily consult the documentation for, for that form for MATLAB. The third case is, let's say I've got a statistical data and then I want to see how can I calculate the variance. And I don't know what command is in MATLAB that variance can be calculated with. And I just, okay, I'll come to ChatGPT and just ask it, show me how to generate the variance of a data in MATLAB. Just something really basic. And then we'll see again what he will say. So again, it starts by saying, here is an example. So it generates a set of data and say all I need to do is to say variance as a variable is equal to var in bracket data. And this will calculate the variance of your data, which is basically the average of, of that. And then it's a lot, you can also use the variance with a flag for normalization. So it goes into more details again to explain. And not only does it explain, it gives you a little bit of code too that you can use instantly for the analysis. And this is what I find really fascinating when it comes to how ChatGPT works. So the final thing in this first category of using it in a kind of like a learning model, like consulting as you would consult a person, is something that I always have to deal with, you know, quite a lot. And that is how can I read and write data? Let's say from an Excel file to a text file, you can even think about plotting them and all that. So this is something that we do a lot. You do a lot of experiments and you want to read that data from the experiments to be able to plot inside MATLAB. How can I do that? And let's say I do not know how to do it. So I could ask ChatGPT and see what it would tell me. So it's thinking about it and it says, okay, you can read data from an Excel file using this command called XLS read. So that's an Abaku, a MATLAB command that reads an Excel file. And instantly it tells me how you can do that. So it's basically saying, okay, you know, this variable is a quote XLS data read. So it already demonstrates to me how to do that. And then it goes on to say, okay, for the action of writing, because I'm saying I want to write to, again, back into either Excel or some other format, it goes on to explain how you can do that in more details. So again, very fantastic in what this code can actually do for you. So the second category here is trying to use ChatGPT to help me create a graphical user interface. This is something that MATLAB is really very good at. So I've got a busy system, so I could just easily clear this current conversation. So I'll come back to the blank canvas and then I just type in the command of what I want. So write the code that creates a MATLAB GUI that accepts input from me and calculates the area of a pentagon and display the area on the GUI. So the, the key task here first is you create a GUI, that GUI will ask for an input from me and then use that input to create the area of a pentagon calculate the area of a pentagon and also display the area of that pentagon for me. The grammar may not be right. I've not asked what kind of input that I need. And ChatGPT is going to think about this and try and see if he's able to generate this information for me. So I'll just enter then and see what ChatGPT will do. Now it's a, it's a simple code that can help. I like the fact that it actually start giving me the code. It's basically writing a function script, which is going to be called Pentagon GUI. At the beginning here, it's okay, it creates a figure which is basically the graphical user interface and then some user input control. So this is where it's asking for information for me. And it now created a level, a text level, which is going to have some information on that text level here. And it goes on around here. You've got the callback function where it's trying to calculate the area and then it finishes that. And it gives me further information, which is again, what I like about ChatGPT. It says you can run this code by simply calling the function called Pentagon GUI in the command line and you open a window and would ask you to enter the site in that window and then the area and all that. So what we're going to do is let's let's play with this and see whether it's possible. So I'll just copy this code and then I'm going to go back to MATLAB and within MATLAB, let's open a script and then I'll paste that information that I want. And obviously I need to save it. So using that name. So it's saved as that and then I can run it. So instantly you see, okay, it's sort of doing what we want. With a little bit of work, we could resize things and get it looking well. But let's just leave it in this way. So it's enter the side length of this pentagon. So I could say, okay, the side length of this pentagon is 12. And then enter, and it gives me the, the area. So I could try, okay, something like 10, enter, it gives me the value. So sort of what I want is really doing that. But I could say, okay, I don't really like what it has done. So I could just go back to my chat GPT and say, okay, rewrite this code, but create a calculate 
area button. So because at the moment I don't have a calculate area button, so I'm telling it to write the code and let's see what it will do. So it's a, here's an example of how you can modify the previous code to include this calculating area button that I'm asking it for. And, and, and it will go through the same process of trying to generate the information again and trying to get to the point where you have to calculate the area. And to be able to calculate the area, to have this calculate area button, it's going to be basically a push button. So here is where it's a calculating the area button that you have to press and you get your result. So we're going to look at it again and see whether it's going to do this job for us. Okay, in the end, we've finished. And then it's kind of explaining further. So I'm just going to copy that code and then go back to here. I'm just going to paste it back on top of what we had before and just save it. And now run the code again. Okay, so now we have a setup where there's a calculate area. So what if I put maybe 12 again and say calculate area. So one, there's a calculate area button that is created for me. There is the option for me to enter what I want. And there is also the option to display the area on, on that window. So this is just chat GPT generating the result. It's really very interesting that without you even knowing how this is done, the chat GPT is generating the information for you. And this is what is really very amazing about the capability of this code. So the final category is about how ChatGPT can actually help you with MATLAB code writing. In my opinion, this is kind of the most important use because it can really do excellent coding for you. And so we're going to give it certain scenarios of task and we're going to see how it's going to do it. And the first one, if we go back to ChatGPT, so let's say this is the code information that we want to work with. So I want to say, write a MATLAB code that reads and writes data from an Excel file to a text file in MATLAB. Now also generate the code for plotting the data so we can visualize it in Cartesian coordinate system. So there's a lot of information there. So he reads the data, he writes it to a text file, what he has read, and then plots the resulting data in a Cartesian coordinate system. So this is, let's say you've got experimental data that you want to analyze, and this is a command. So let's just ask ChatGPT and see what he will do. Now, Instantly, it starts giving out the response, generates initial information right away. Again, using the commands that we already looked at previously, the XLS command and the DLM write command. Now, this is where it's plotting the data. And it says, okay, in this, it goes further to explain what is happening. So some really very, you know, nifty, nice code that is trying to generate for you. So I'm going to copy that and then go back to MATLAB. And within MATLAB, I'll paste the result of what is generated for me and let's see whether it works so within this data which i've, I've just saved as read data you can see it here now what you will find here is i already have a pre-existing data file called data so let's just run that and see and then instantly it plots the graph for us as we will expect so this is a basically a parabolic graph that is what is in that data so what if we change it to the second case so in this second case, I'm going to call this my share case. And I'm going to just make a tiny modification just to close any figure that was there before. Because I know Closer will do that. So I've changed the file name to this and then we can run it. Okay, so that's a share data from an experiment that I've done in the past. Okay, I mean, you can then go ahead and for that do some modifications to this by saying, okay, I want this to be circles and hyphen lines and then you could say okay my line width is going to be three okay and maybe at the end here you could say okay i want box on so you want the data to be and then you run that and then okay it gives you a different a more probably better way of showing that data so all that is created by chat gpt so it created this code of being able to open excel read that data plot that data and for us so instantly we have a script that we can actually use to analyze a series of our data we can just put it in a loop and it will analyze a lot of experimental data that we have plotted and this is fantastic so that first case is sort of simple so in this second case we're going to do something a little bit more challenging so let's just put this command so which is something i've already written before so if we look at what this is talking about so it say i want chat gpt to write a matlab code to read and plot data from excel file and using that plotted data to plot a line curve then in the same curve calculate and display the mean and the applicable minimum and maximum data from the data. So let's say you've done an experiment and you want to find the strength. So the maximum point of that data, it will calculate it for you. If it's a statistical data, maybe you want the mean, the mode, and the median. 
and then take the line width of the graphs to be three to be set at three and also the marker type to be hollow circles make sure that you use fine peaks to determine either the maximum or the minimum of the data so there's a lot of information that is packaged that because i sort of have an idea of what i wanted to do and then i could go enter and then see what it says so instantly it's generating some results for me and it says okay i'm going to read the data as you requested from excel and it's going to plot it and have access to use a line width of three so it's doing exactly that it's leveling the axis as well there's a title to the data now it's going to calculate and display the mean of my data so okay so it started doing that it's calculated the mean now it's going to find the maximum and the minimum point so again it's trying to do that within here and it said display the minimum of the maximum data is doing that here and it's calculating here to display the mode and so on and everything is all done properly as it's supposed to be so i'll copy that and then we'll go back to matlab and then i'll just paste that into an editor and so we could save that so i save that data and call it analyze data and then we can plot it so again if i go back to the top i'll just ask it to close all so that if there's any figure that is there it closes and we run that okay so it's it's done that so it's gone in plotted the graph and more importantly it's displayed for me the mean okay and display for me the maximum the minimum point because if you look at this data is obviously a minimum here so it displays me the minimum point here and and what the value of the minimum point here is number four it's a value of four at index nine so if you calculate the numbers it's position nine so it finds also for me the mode and the median of this data so this is not particularly exciting so why not let's look at the actual experimental data so i'm just going to change this to data share because i've got data share in this and then i run the same code again we have some interesting result so it plots the graph now it's saying that the mean of my data is this there is no minimum but it has been able to pick up and there is no more to the data and there is a median so it's sort of doing what we want but i'm not really happy with that so i'll go back to it and said okay rewrite this code but make sure you determine the applicable maxima or minima for the given data set all right so i've sort of asked it because it wasn't picking up the maxima in the second set of data and i'm asking it can you rewrite this code but make sure that if my code has got a maxima you report the maxima if it's got a minima you report the minima as well and, and and because you wouldn't know so let's say you're doing a tensile test you'll have a maximum if you're doing a compression test you'll have a minima so you want to, this code to be robust enough to do this and so you're asking it to that so it's done most of the things however there is something happening here where it's saying okay find the minimum or maximum data if something is empty then you do something so this little bit of addition here is what will make that judgment and so okay if it is there you do it if it's not there don't do it I'm not making the code. ChatGPT is doing all the work for me. So let's just copy that code there and then see whether it actually does what we want. So it's picked up the minima as we expected before. Now, why not if we change this to share? We know that share has got a maxima and then we run it again. It has done the work. This time around, it picked up a maxima at 15.605, which is about the number here. So excellent. So by quick simply asking it, just rewrite the code, but make sure that this particular condition is obeyed. It has done that very well. This little part of the code is where it finds the minima and the maximum data. And it really depends on what is happening in the data. If you're interested in learning a bit more about MATLAB, so I've got this MATLAB playlist where I deal with MATLAB and things like this. Thank you for your interest in this video and I'll see you in the next.